Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, continuing with our crystallographic texture uh, discussion, uh, today we will uh, discuss about uh, texture representation okay, using uh, already we have seen uh, using pole figure or HKL UVW representation or orientation distribution function. Okay. So, I will show you that how you can use the idea of stereographic projection to develop pole figures okay, and then uh, how to understand the ODF, what do we mean by ODF and so on. Okay. So, before going any further, this is these are the actually the techniques for measurement of texture, okay. texture measurement and an analysis. Okay. One is what we call as electron backscatter diffraction okay, which is also called as EBSD. And in this you measure micro texture means at microstructural level okay. and then you have macro texture or what we call as bulk texture that means uh, over a bigger volume you measure texture in this case. Okay. So, in this uh, category you have x-ray diffraction. Okay. If you want even better uh, uh, measurement in a bigger volume okay uh, in bulk okay you can go for neutron diffraction or synchronon uh, diffraction so these are the macro texture uh, or bulk texture okay and ebsd is uh, at microstructure level so we call it as microstructure the area covered is small as at the same time because we are dealing with electron the electron penetration within the material will is usually very small Okay, so, the amount of volume it covers okay, thick depth wise in the material is also very small whereas, x-rays can penetrate more a synchrotron and neutron diffraction even this radiation even uh, penetrate the penetration is even more. So, there you get the bulk volume information and that is why we say macro texture or bulk texture. Texture representation already we have seen this uh, that you can do uh, texture orientation representation by uh, HKL UVW symbols okay, or through pole figure or orientation distribution function. So, we will look each one by one. Okay. HKL UVW we have already seen once, I am just giving a quick review here. So, if I want to suppose in a particular grain, okay, the, the unit cell is oriented like this. Okay and let me give you the sample geometry first. So, this is my RD, okay. this is my transverse direction and normal to this rolling surface is the normal direction. Okay. So, these are the three is uh, orthogonal sample uh, symmetry and uh, in, in this cube, okay, let us say uh, this particular direction, okay, this one is 1 0 0, this one is 0 1 0 and this going up is 0 0 1. Okay. So, you have sample geometry and you have uh, uh, crystallographic axis. So, if I want to represent the texture orient uh, the or the orientation of this particular unit cell, uh, I will not call it as texture right now, it is the orientation of this particular grain in which the unit cell is oriented like this. Okay. Then uh, as we have said the HKL plane of the grains parallel to rolling plane. Okay. So, this is my rolling plane, this is my rolling plane okay. and the plane which is uh, parallel to this rolling plane is the 0, 0, 1 plane okay, O1 plane okay. or you can also say that the, the, the normal to this particular plane is 0, 0, 1 okay. and that is parallel to ND. Okay, so, either you can say this or you can say the, the uh, normal to HKL plane okay, 
parallel to N D. Okay, so these two statements are same. So we can see that the 0, 0, 1 plane is the is parallel to the rolling plane. Okay, and the U V W direction, which is parallel to rolling direction. So we can see that 1, 0, 0 is the direction which is parallel to R D. Okay, so for this particular orientation, uh, I would say that my texture or my grain orientation is 0, 0, 1, and uh, 1 0 0 ok. So, this is this is the grain orientation for this particular unit cell. If you suppose if I have rotated it by 45 degree ok this particular cube ok, then what will happen uh, my 1 1 0 direction will be parallel to R D ok. Then I would suppose at, if I rotate 45 degree uh, on 0 0 1 ok then what will happen the cube will be such that the 110 direction now it should be yeah 110 direction ok uh, is parallel to R D. So, again plane will be same 0 0 1 because the same plane we are rotating about 0 0 1 here ok and the direction is now new the 100 0 0 will go at 45 degree ok. So, the 110 will become parallel to R D so then it will be 110. Okay. So, now just by rotating the unit cell we, our orientation has grain orientation is changed. Okay. So, like this I can represent in terms of H K L U V W. Now, coming to four pole figure okay, again it is similar to stereographic projection. If you remember when we were plotting stereographic projection for let us say for 0 0 1 standard stereographic projection, what we did is we did put, put 0 0 1 uh, uh, normal ok such that that it was hitting the the top pole ok and it was projected exactly at the center of the uh, our projection ok. And then we plotted all the other poles with reference to that ok. So, uh, we plotted all the 110 poles or 111 poles ok. So, there we did not restrict uh, any pole we plotted all the poles. Now, when we talk about pole figure ok, we are interested only in a particular pole ok. So, that is why I have highlighted here that when I say pole figure I, why it is different from stereographic projection though the construction and uh, the concept is same that we are only interested in a particular pole here ok. And we will use the sample geometry as the reference uh, for, uh, for the plot uh, for plotting ok. So, for example, uh, this is a 0 0 1 pole figure. So, when I say it is 0 0 1 pole figure I am only interested in the 0 0 1 poles. So, if you compare with the stereographic projection this particular one ok, you will see that there are no other poles plotted here only the 1 0 0 are plotted ok. So, that is why I am calling this as 0 0 1 pole figure. Now, right now I have not mentioned any sample geometry here ok. But when I am going to plot the pole figure the geometry will be something like this. So, you have a rolling direction here the normal direction is just uh, uh, hitting the hitting the top pole. So, it is ex exactly at the center and the transfer direction is at 90 degree to both R D and N D ok. So, this is the sample geometry and now with reference to this we will be able to tell what is the orientation of each grain ok. So, like we did just for HKL UVW similarly you can do in pole figure that this is my sample geometry, this is my RD, ND and TD with reference to this for example, if I want to plot 0 0 1 pole figure ok where the 0 0 1 are lying right now ok. So, for example, this particular orientation which is shown here ok. So, my 0 0 1 will be of course, lying on these locations ok. Ok, so suppose I take this as 0 0 1 ok, then uh, uh, maybe this will become your or let us say we take the same orientation as is shown there. So, we are not confused ok. So, this is the orientation. So, 0 0 1 is going and hitting the top. So, of course, it will come exactly at the center then 1 0 0 will go in the bottom ok. So, this is 1 0 0 ok and 0 1 0 will go here ok. This becomes 0 1 bar 0 
and this become 1 bar 1 0 0 ok. So, this is the orientation of this particular uh, unit cell with reference to our sample geometry. So, whenever I say pole figure it is very similar to stereographic projection only difference is that we are now plotting a sample geometry on the on the on the projection. When we were discussing stereographic projection we were just plotting in terms of north, south, east and west taking the analogy from the globe ok. But uh, now we are going to impose the sample geometry on the on the stereographic projection first. Second thing is that we will be only interested in a particular pole and that we will write that we are interested in this particular pole and only that pole will be visible on the stereographic projection. Okay, so, just to give you an example here, we have taken a stereographic projection here which is 0, 0, 001 okay, standard stereographic projection. Okay. Now, I want to convert it into a 0, 0, 001 pole figure. Okay. I want to convert it into a 0, 0, 001 pole figure. So, as I told you, that uh, if I convert it into a 0, 0, 001 pole figure, I would not be uh, seeing any other poles. Okay. So, for me all these poles uh, I am just removing them here. Okay. Oh, sorry, not this one. I have removed all. Okay. Okay. So, now only the poles which you can see are the 0, 0, 001 poles. Okay. So, you can see this one, this one, this one, this one and this one. Okay. So, this will be a 0, 0, 001 pole figure all the other poles I have removed. Okay. You would not be able to see other poles here. Suppose the same thing same stereographic projection, but I am now interested in let us say 0, 0, 001 I want to convert it into a 0, 0, 001 pole figure. Okay. Then what I will be doing? I will be removing all the other poles. Okay. So, I am now removing all the other poles here. So, now you can see that I am only seeing the 110 pole figures here. Okay. So, this is what is meaning of pole figure and now I can also superimpose the, the geometry here. Okay. For example, I can say this is my R D, T D, N D okay, if I am interested in that. Similarly, I can say this is R D, T D and N D. Okay. So, this is the whole idea of pole figure okay. and now we will use this idea to show a couple of uh, uh, texture orientations. Okay. For example, uh, you have one orientation what we call as cube orientation. Okay. It is very simple orientation already we have seen in terms of HKL UVW. Okay. There uh, the 0, 0, 001 is parallel to the rolling plane and 100 is parallel to rolling direction. Okay. That kind of texture component is there. Okay. I, I hope you will be able to imagine it. Okay. Maybe if you want I can try to show you. Okay. So, this is my rolling direction, this is my transverse direction, this is my normal direction and on this uh, my cube is there. Okay. So, this is the 0, 0, 001, this 1 0, 0 and this 0 1 0. Okay. So, this is parallel to N D, this is parallel to R D. Okay. So, this is the orientation, how it will look on, on a 0, 0, 001 pole figure, it will be similar to this. So, I am just putting R, my sample geometry here R D, T D 
and ND okay and for me all other poles will go now okay. So, as I just showed you all these poles will not be visible for me okay. Okay, so now if I have a cube orientation for my grain okay, and uh, uh, I want to plot a 0, 0, 1 pole figure then that pole figure will look like this. Okay. So, all my poles here this one will be there, this one will be there, this one will be there, this one. Okay. So, very nice symmetry will be visible to you. Okay. So, this is my 0, 0, 1 pole figure. For the same uh, grain orientation, uh, orientation, if I am interested or I am plotting the 1, 1, 1 pole figure, okay, then my all other poles will go. Okay. So, now I would not be able to see this one obviously, okay, this one will go, this one will go. Okay. So, if, if it is a cube orientation okay, that means this 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0 okay, and I plot the 1, 1, 1 pole figure I will be able to see uh, only these poles. Okay. So, these 4 poles will be visible, so only these 4 poles will be visible in this symmetry. Okay. So, this symmetry will be very, very clear you will have these 4 poles okay, at this particular angle for this orientation okay, and of course, this will be your R D, T D and N D. Okay. So, for the same orientation I can plot different pole figures. Okay. So, if you get a 1 1 1 pole figure you should not worry about that it is some kind of 1 1 1 orientation. The orientation is still is 0 0 1 1 0 0 only we have plotted the 1 1 1 pole figure and from stereographic projection understanding of stereographic projection we know that where these poles will come. Okay, where these four poles will be coming the symmetry will be there okay, and what will be the angular information you can always get using the wolf net and that will follow whatever is the angle between which you have calculated you using for example, cos theta relationship. Okay. There is another very important orientation, orientation called Gauss orientation. Okay. The orientation has this information okay, that means, h k l plane is uh, the 0 1 1 plane is parallel to the rolling plane and the 1 0 0 direction is uh, parallel to rolling direction. Okay. Uh, if I may try to show you the orientation here, okay, I hope I should be able to show you. Okay. Uh, it will look something like this. Um, Uh, I am not able to uh, draw that actually the 1 1 0 plane will be parallel to this and the rolling direction will be uh, parallel to 1 0 0. Okay. So, again our rolling T D and N D are there. Okay. So, when a 0 0 1 plane is parallel to R D, so it is normal will go and hit the top pole okay. so, and, and its projection will be exactly at the center obviously. Okay. And uh, if I am now plotting a 0, 0, 1 pole figure for this orientation, okay. so now you can see I have taken a 0, 0, 1 stereographic projection here okay. and I want to show you that how uh, the, the pole figure will look like. Okay. So, I am removing all the other poles other than 1, 0, 0 types. Okay. Okay. So, you can see that uh, uh, only on this particular poles are shown okay. and if I am looking at a 1 1 1 pole figure of the same uh, 
uh, orientation same grain orientation of course i will remove all the other poles here and i will keep only the 111 poles okay so you should be able to see uh, only the poles which i am highlighting here now instead of removing so you will see all these poles so in a 111 pole figure if you see a symmetry like this okay you should be able to understand that it is a gauss orientation which has a 011 at the center and the and the 100 is is parallel to rolling direction so this will be your rd okay td and nd similarly this will be your rd td and nd okay so i am keeping my sample geometry like this okay and looking at the uh, that how the unit cell is oriented with respect to the sample geometry so that i am plotting in the pole figure okay now uh, as al already i have told you that there is a another concept called uh, again the to show the orientation and especially when when you have a axis symmetric processes okay for example rolling is, is not a axis symmetric process you have uh, strain in different direction but for example you are doing a wire drawing operation or an extrusion operation there the strain is symmetric so only you are applying uh, it's the, it is increasing the length is increasing in the direction of the extrusion or wire drawing and if you see around that in the diametrical or on around the circumference okay the strain will be is uniform throughout the uh, throughout this circumference okay uh, or in the direction of the uh, or in the di radial direction the strain will be uniform uh, in the 360 degree direction okay so this is what we call as axis symmetric processes in that uh, because the strain is only in one direction you get a, a, a very symmetrical uh, deformation okay and then in that case you can easily plot uh, only the inverse pole figure okay what do we mean by inverse pole figure okay so you can take this one particular triangle there are 24 triangles and all are symmetrical so any one triangle i can take okay and that i am plotting here so you can see that at 101 you have more intensity okay so when when there are large number of grains which are oriented with this kind of orientation you will see that there are more number of points falling on these particular poles okay and that is how you get the texture information through pole figure okay so as you can see it is more at 101 if i take this triangle you can see here also that there is a more intensity around 101 okay as as it was here around 101 and this is the standard triangle we are taking 001 101 111 that is what is shown here okay and uh, this is not a 0, 0, 001 pole figure it is a 0, 1, 1 okay all the poles are shown okay uh, so this is okay so this is how uh, you can plot an inverse pole figure map okay so all the sample direction are projected on the crystal frame okay so you can see that here what we are fixing we are not saying that whether rd td nd we are fixing the crystal frame so 001 101 111 this is what we have fixed and now we are looking at that how the nd direction which is which you can also call as 001 direction or i can call it as nd direction that how the nd direction is oriented with respect to this uh, uh, crystal directions okay or crystal reference frame so th this is slightly just an opposite of what we do in pole figure where we have fixed the sample geometry and we are looking at that how the unit cell is oriented whereas in this case we are fixing the crystal frame okay and we are looking at nd that how the nd is oriented with respect to the uh, crystal frame okay so as you can see that most of the grains have their 101 axis aligned toward the deformation axis okay now there are can be different texture components can be shown on the pole figure okay already we have seen two cube and gauze okay so those two are also shown here then there are some more here brass copper and s okay and there are different symbols are used for that which are shown on the pole figure where these will will be there so if you are plotting a 111 pole figure okay you will get an information like this okay if you plot 
200 pole figure for the same orientations ok. Again the orientations are same, but you can see that the arrangement has changed obviously, because we are now looking at the 200 pole figure or 100 pole figure both will be parallel ok. So, th th this is how it will be depicted and when you look at the pole figure the you will see th some kind of this kind of arrangement ok, higher, higher intensity like this in, in, in one case you it will be something like this uh, kind of a man standing ok. So, this kind of uh, if you see this kind of uh, uh, intensities on the pole figure large number of grains oriented like this, then you know that these are the texture component which are, uh, are uh, projecting on the pole figure ok. Now, uh, the problem with pole figure is that you can only show two, two angles ok, one is uh, uh, from the center how much uh, far the po pole is there ok and how much it is rotated from the R D for example. So, how much it is rotated from the N D and how much it is rotated from R D ok, but we know that we, because we are dealing with a three dimensional spaces here that there has to be three angles to actually give you the complete information about orientation ok. So, for that some drawbacks which are there with the pole figure can be solved using a orientation distribution function ok. So, that is the depiction of orientation in a, in a three dimensional Euler space ok. We will see what do we mean by Euler uh, space or Euler angles and um, be because our pole figures are not suffi sufficient uh, information is given. And what this ODF is that each point in the ODF represent a single specific orientation or texture component ok. So, each point on ODF represent some, some orientation information or some texture component ok. So, I will show you what do we, how do we uh, understand ODF ok, but before going there I will first show you what do we mean by Euler space or Euler angles ok. So, basically it is like this uh, you have two frame ok, one is your uh, sample frame which is R D ok, T D and N D and there is another frame which is your crystallographic axis. So, you have 1 0 0 axis, uh, 0 1 0 axis and 0 0 1 axis ok. So, now as you can understand that my my crystal my or my unit cell is not aligned with the sample geometry ok, it is a randomly uh, oriented in, in, in the space ok. So, now I want to know that how much uh, orientation is there or how much rotation is there or how much off it is aligned with the sample geometry ok. So, I want to bring it back to the sample geometry and whatever rotation I will be requiring to do that, that will be the, uh, the information about the, uh, about the orientation of that particular unit cell ok. So, there is a sequence uh, which we follow to do this ok. You, so, you have three angles here, one rotation is phi 1 angle, then you have capital phi and then again the phi 2 angle, these three angles will be there. There are other uh, notations also, we are following Euler notation here. So, they in that case it will be like this. So, the two ref frames are shown here, blue one is for sample ok. So, you have these two axes in the plane ok and one perpendicular to this plane and another one is 0 1 0 0 0 1 0 plane and up, up uh, normal to this plane will be 0 0 1. So, this is how this is oriented. Okay. So, now if I want to bring it into coincidence all this axis ok, what I will do? I will first give a rotation on 0 0 1 for example, here ok. So, when I am giving a rot, but how much rotation I have to give ok. So, that will be decided by that how much of this 1 0 0 is with, with the this R D T D plane. So, the rotation will be such that that my this 1 0 0 axis so, when I am giving a rotation like here ok on this on this let us say uh, then it, it will be rotating like this ok. So, this disc also will be rotating ok. 
So, when it is rotating then this uh, 100 axis will uh, uh, ultimately fall on the this RDTD plane okay. and whatever is the rotation required that I will note down that I, I have made this many rotation okay. let us say it is phi 1. Okay. So, once this 100 axis is on the RDTD plane which is this now second uh, image here. So, my 100 is now lying on the R RDTD plane. Okay. So, now it is very once it this is lying on the RDTD plane I can easily bring the 001 axis parallel to ND because any rotation I am going to give in the, the, the same, same uh, sample geometry it can it will be a, there will be a true angle between the ND and 001. So, any rotation if I give this will bring uh, this parallel to ND. Okay. So, I know that how much rotation I have to give, I have to give a rotation on 100 now, so that this comes and uh, become coincidence with the ND. Okay. So, let us say that is my capital phi. So, now my Z is parallel to ND or my 001 is parallel to ND, okay, but still 100 and 010 are not parallel to RDTD, but since now my these two are aligned okay, and both these two direction are in the same plane of sample geometry, I know that how much rotation will be required okay, to bring 100 in coincidence with RD and 010 in coincidence with the TD. Okay. So, that one let us say we call it as phi 2. Okay. So, these three rotations if I give okay, I will be able to bring the unit cell from whatever orientation it is in to the sample geometry rotation. So, that defines the orientation of this particular uh, uh, particular, particular unit cell. Okay. So, now you can see that I have three angles. Okay. So, I, I can now create a three dimensional space using these three angles okay, which is what we are doing here. So, you have phi 1, okay, phi 2 and phi 3, three dimensional Euler space okay. and in, in and in any point in this okay, will have, have some, some phi 1, phi, phi 2. So, that will be the orientation of that particular grain. Okay. Now, looking at a three dimensional space will always be a difficult prospect. Okay. So, what we will do is we will take slices from these three dimensional space. Okay. Let us say it at 5 degree. Okay. So, we will take the slices and in the slices we will see that whichever uh, orientation are falling on that will be shown here. Okay. So, this is what is shown here. So, you can see that this is 0 to 90 phi 1, okay. then this is 0 to 90 phi capital phi and phi 2 is taken at different intervals phi to 0 degree, 5 degree, 10 degree, 15 degree, 20 degree, and up to 90. So, 0 to 90 here, okay. so this is from 0 to 90, this is also from 0 to 90 and uh, and this one is also from 0 to 90. Okay. So, 0 to 90, 0 to 90 and then the slices of phi 2 at 5 degree and so on. Okay. And few uh, texture component which we have already seen you can see it here also. So, the cube will be already in the same sample geometry is not it. Cube already we have said the 0 0 1 is parallel to the rolling plane that means it is parallel to N D and 100 is parallel to rd so already cube is in the same orientation you don't require any any uh, rotation to bring the two in the coincidence because they are already in the same uh, same reference frames okay so that is why you will see that for cube you have phi 1 as 0 phi also as 0 and phi 2 already we are taking the zero slice here so cube will be at these locations okay Gauss will be at as I told you that uh, it is 110 plane that means I, I have rotated the, the, the unit cell by 45 degree. Okay. So, it will be somewhere where you have 45 degree angle in, in, in phi. Okay. So, like that the brass will be somewhere here 
okay different texture component can be now shown on the uh, odf so, copper will be somewhere here another texture component s will be somewhere here okay so now i can get all the texture component information from the orientation distribution function okay so this is how you can use different representation of texture to understand that how the grain is oriented or if more than one grains are oriented then i can get uh, intensities like these contours so this can be plotted as discrete plot also you can show as points okay or you can do some kind of interpolation okay using some mathematical function and then you can plot contours okay so the when the contours are more or the their numbers are more that means that that is that much more uh, intense okay and that will be able to give you the uh, particular information about the texture okay so i hope uh, you are able to understand all this uh, texture representation okay so in next class we will look at few uh, few typical texture uh, uh, which is produced in the material because of deformation or recrystallization okay